thing. I apologize. This is going to be the Kittle Bill video. I'm 90% sure I just said Kill Bill. Did anybody else hear that? What the hell's going on here? Okay, so a couple things I want to cover real quick. I did tell you about the... Let me lower my voice so it doesn't echo as bad. I did tell you about the uh, sleeves that I'll be using. And I will put those in the link in the description below. Remember, they're not necessary. But if you are prone to, like, joint problems or there's a certain joint on your body that causes you issues, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and protect it in advance. Now, my wrist has been bothering me. I did about, I'd say roughly 6,000 kettle swings this month. And this strap helps me for that. Only the one wrist bothers me and only the other one elbow bothers me. Now, don't worry, I'm not saying when you do kettlebell swings that this is going to be your problem. I'm not saying I'm also a kettlebell professional, necessarily, but I have done plenty of swings and I know there's a couple really important things that you should take into consideration first. If this is your first go-round with exercise in general, you need to take it slow and you need to be careful because these specifically require a lot of core strength, as well as a lot of shoulder strength, as well as a lot of back strength and balance. So please keep all of those things in mind. If you're going to start incorporating a kettlebell workout regularly, I hope this video is not totally ruined by the echo. I apologize. But if you're going to be doing that regularly, Work on those other things, those other parts of your body that I said are really important. There's a couple things that you want to go ahead and stretch out before you get started. I would say your hip flexors, as well as your shoulders, and also your back and core. So if you want to do some light walking, maybe jogging, maybe some arm circles, backward circles, something like that, that can be really helpful. Maybe some light abdominal crunches, and maybe some reversed uh, back exercises so that you can kind of warm up all those parts and maybe even some hip flexor stretch outs like this you can see right here this will stretch the hip flexor out there and then on this side same thing just hold for like 10 seconds and you can also do some light squats some hair squats um, but Another thing that I want you to be very careful of is going too heavy in the beginning. If you're new to this, um, I know you're excited and I know you're ambitious, but it's better to go slow and get progressively stronger with your core and all those other muscles that I was talking about, rather than going heavy and risking injury. I don't care. Yes, I could probably swing an 80 pound dumbbell for a kettle, but there's no purpose for that with previous injuries and the type of regimen that I'm currently on, other than ego lifting. And you don't want to ego lift because you're going to end up in a lot of pain and prone to more injuries. So please keep that in mind. So I'm going to show you a couple of the exercises that I do. It's very basic. Um, the, the first one, remember, I want you to be pushing forward with your hips, like the weight pushing, rather than, you're not lifting the weight necessarily. That would be completely different. That would be for your front uh, deltoids. So, to show you, I have a 30 pound right here, which is not super heavy. So, I don't start all the way up. I start with a swinging. Look, if you can see, I'm pushing through my hips, and then I'm gradually Take my knees up and we'll go to the side so you can see that. Basically, pushing the weight through my hips. I'm basically lifting all of the weight through my hips and exploding it through my hips and through my quadriceps up so that all the stress is not put on here. 
It's a really good cardiovascular workout. Now, if you're doing one-handed, go very light in the beginning. I'm not going to do one-handed with 30. Can I? Yes. Should I? Probably not. I would drop it down to a 15. Okay? So same thing, explosion of the hips. Same type of thing. Be careful when you rotate. Put your hand on the other hand if you're going to rotate in midair. That's fine. If you do, I would not let go of the weight if you end up breaking something. I can because it's something I do on a regular basis. Be careful not to let the weight jerk your arms. Your joints are not made for that, okay? They're not made to be pulled on like that. So keep your core tight, your body tight, everything tight while you're doing the entire exercise. About 50% of you guys are going to say, I don't have kettlebells. What do I do? You can do it with dumbbells. You can do it with a lot of things. You can do it with a plate, like a weight plate. You can do it a lot of different ways. Um, you can also do it with no weight. You could get a backpack and put four or five canned foods in there, tie it up real tight, or even a plastic bag, but probably a backpack would be safer. And they get it in a ball and then grab onto the handle and use that. I also have made my own kettlebells out of protein containers and cement. So if you want to see that video, please uh, click the link that will be in the end of the video. Now, this is going to be a kettle swing with a dumbbell. Just a regular old dumbbell, same weight. Same weight, same thing. Okay? If you want to get crazy, go for it. Spin it up in the air. But, know what you're doing before you do something like that. The only thing I feel that that helps me with is the monotony and the boringness of kettlebell swings. Now there's one more thing I do, and beyond that, um, you can do these, any variation. There's thousands and thousands of workouts out there, so don't feel limited. This is something that's really cool that you can take on vacations with you, and also, if you can't take it on vacations with you, when you get to a location, you can pick one up for like 20 or 30 bucks and carry it around by your vacation. I know they are slightly heavy, but still an effective way of getting your workout done no matter what. Not making excuses and just getting it done. So, this one here is called the Goblet Squat. I use this. Some people do this variation by holding the, the uh, kettlebell that way. I hold it between my legs. at first till, until you know what you're capable of. It's better to use 10 pounds and be safe and be underworked the first week or so rather than trying to shoot up to a 50 pound kettlebell and end up injuring yourself and being out of commission for six months. You guys keep up the good work. 
If you like our video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Again, this is Jonathan with One Big Impact. Hashtag, be stronger than your excuses. Remember to spread love, not hate. I apologize for the echo. The gym was packed. You guys wanted the video. Keep up the good work. Have a beautiful day, guys. And anything else? Oh, drink your damn water. Mine's over there. You see that? Check out the links in the description below for your BCAAs as well as your t-shirts, guys. Have a good day. Peace.